Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today on the button press, we're going to put the dress on this one. Uh, you remember this one? A size 7 evening gown in the latest style, even though it sat unclaimed in low fats Chinese laundry for two years. Some fashions never go out of style. So you think. Anywho, this is a, a ladies' room, I suppose? Hiya, doll face. Looking for a good time? <laughs> I'm looking for better lo uh, voice acting than that. Not right now, but thank you for asking. It's your loss, toots. I'll be right here if you change your mind. This lady is a... Oh, yes. Touch me again. <laughs> Whoops. Didn't completely intend to do that. I believe she is of very little consequence. You haven't seen the Countess come into the speakeasy yet, have you? I've been waiting here for hours. Except for this. The Countess? Yeah. The Countess Lavinia Waldorf Carlton. I'm supposed to meet her here. Sorry, haven't seen her. But if I do, I'll be sure and let you know. Thanks, toots. Yes. So, we know now, I suppose, that uh, the Countess uh, W.C. is supposed to show up uh, here at the speakeasy for some reason. I mean, it's just speakeasy. Who can say why anybody would show up necessarily? But, uh, yeah, that's just a, I don't know, a little character. It looks so cute there. in that outfit. It makes me want to scream. Yes. So let's switch into this thing. It's kind of a big deal that we're switching nice into this. Nice body. Uh, but where did you get those clothes? Salvation Army? <laughs> <laughs> You've never said that before, have you, ma'am? <laughs> okay, okay. The, uh, yeah, uh, as I was saying, the big deal with putting this dress on now, the evening gown that we need in order to go over to uh, the Lion Decker Museum, is now as soon as we try to leave with it, we're going to be bust directly over to the Lion Decker Museum. See how the uh, the icon is not giving me a choice to do anything? She's, don't, she's going for it automatically. There's nothing we can do. Luckily, I don't think there's anything else that we need to do in town. And this is the end to Act 2, I believe. Act 2. Oh no, this is the beginning of Act 2. Pardon, 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 pardon. What's the name of this one? Suspect on Parade. Yes. This is going to be, uh... This is going to be an interesting Your set. Your perky demeanor and thorough technique are making you a first-class detective. Oh, thank you very much. I do try. This chapter, this act, is going to be full of character interaction. You see that the fundraising party will begin at 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. There is a tall, imposing gentleman guarding the door. He appears to be wearing a German military uniform. Hmm, curious. This affair is by invitation only, Fräulein. Your papers, please. Fräulein, yes. Okay, I'll, uh, let's not question, let's not do anything funny with him. Danke, Fräulein. I'll return this pass when you're leaving. Enjoy yourself this evening. Uh. Oh, yeah, clock up here. It is now seven. And the fundraiser is just beginning. Ah, look at this. This, uh, like, like I was saying, this section is going to be um, pretty heavy on character interaction, and really most of that interaction is just going to be listening in like this. There I was, standing on the hillside above the excavation in the Valley of the Kings, with the faithful Mahmud describing the dance of the Seven Veils to me in great detail, when a shout arose up from the workers below us. Sensing an important discovery at hand, since I have a sixth sense about these things, I scurried downhill to see that a step had been uncovered in the sand. It turned out to be the entrance to the Temple of Amun-Ra. I took the trowel from the Boscafir and cleared the sand away from the rest of the steps myself, revealing the entrance to the temple. The seal of the necropolis was intact on the door seal, indicating that the temple had not been disturbed. I knew that fate had brought me to the discovery I had been seeking for so long. Tireless after my exertion in clearing the staircase, I used a sledgehammer to break through the sealed doorway. 
Within lay the greatest accomplishment of my considerable career. Yes. Hidden within the darkness, untouched for thousands of years in the isolated temple, lay the magnificent dagger of Amon Ra, the greatest discovery of modern archaeology. Good show! My, my. Magnifique. Very impressive, Dr. Carter. So, that's when you heisted it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't heist it, you annoying little man. I took it out of the temple and showed it to the workers, who immediately fell upon their faces, all 350 of them, to show respect for my accomplishment. That's hard to believe, Dr. Carter. Egyptian workers have proudly worked the archaeological digs for many years. I would not think they'd exaggerate their respect for you to such an extent. But then, you weren't there, were you, Mr. Najir? That's right, that's Ramses well, Najir. no, that's true. He's an accountant and he has a lisp. And when was the last time you were in Egypt, Mr. Najir? You seem to have lost some of your accent. Well, it has been several years. I thought as much. Your discovery really was quite a remarkable achievement, Dr. Carter. Was remarkable, Dr. Carrington. You mean, it is a remarkable achievement. <laughs> there has never been anything like it before. God. Quite so. Correction noted, Doctor. If you will all be excusing me, I see a man I need to speak to. Certainly, Miss Delacroix. Certainly. Yes, this is an Yvette Delacroix. I completely forget what her role is in all of this. Uh, before we forget, we can take a glass. You pick it up and place it in your purse. This glass is going to be kind of handy later. We're going to be able to use it to listen through doors. But of course, that's a kind of spoilery th sort of thing. Shh. <laughs> can I listen to this one? Some of these I can't listen to, uh, although I could take the time. You must be Dr. Patar Shep Tutsmir. Nice gold ankh you're wearing. This is quite a party, isn't it? I find it distasteful to celebrate thievery in the name of science. The artifacts in this museum's Egyptian collection do not belong here. They belong in Egypt. That's only your opinion. <laughs> it is the truth. And the thieves who rob Egypt of its ancient treasures will find death waiting for them. Amon Ra will have his revenge. Ooh. I see. Well, hmm. Nice weather we're having. That's some incriminating speech, Mr. Uh, Ptashep Tut, whatever. That is interesting, though. Bonjour, Miss Bo. Dr. Carrington told me you were covering this party for the newspaper. I'm Yvette Delacroix. That's right, Miss Delacroix. I'm writing the social news column. Ah, the social news. I was thinking you were here about the burglary. Well... The burglary? <laughs> of course not. The newspaper would never assign a female cub reporter like myself to such an important story. That's right, we are supposed to be plain dumb. Ah, uh, you are probably being correct, Miss Bo. So, I am really curious to know what her role, what Miss Yvette does here. I am not wishing here. to be the rude person. But I must keep mingling this evening unless you have this specific question. Question? Yes, actually, I do. Please tell me about yourself, ma'am. Because uh, I, I think she works here. I think she has an office. Yes, I am Yvette Delacroix. But I am not one to be talking about myself too much, no? I am not like the great Dr. Carter, who has so many of the great stories to tell. Hmm... Perhaps we will find out eventually. I'll keep walking. Yeah. Come on. It's a little finicky, this thing. Uh, actually, let's see if I can't... Oh, yeah, here's... Boy, did he bet. She's some dish, ain't she? <laughs> <laughs> yes, those French women really have something. I don't think my wife would ever have done it in a mummy case. Ooh. In my vast experience of women from different lands, I tend to agree with you, Mr. Nigeria. 
I balked when a certain French woman suggested we have a deep conversation on the back of a dinosaur, but I was pleasantly surprised by the results. <laughs> yes, Miss Delacroix is certainly the cat's pajamas, as the Americans would say. Isn't he American? Yeah, we does come up with some good sayings, don't we? Quite. Good lord, I hadn't realized a woman was present. Please excuse us, Miss Bow. Very observant, sir. Oh, I wasn't actually listening to you gentlemen, Dr. Carrington. I just happened to be standing here. Excuse me. Aha, uh -huh. look at you, ma'am. Hi, I'm Laura Bow, and I'm covering this event for the Tribune Society News Column. Good evening, Miss Bow. I'm the Countess Lavinia Waldorf Carlton. Please be sure to spell my name right in your story. Hmm. That's the type of lady she is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, maybe we can get her to talk a little bit about herself. I'm sure she'd be very glad to. Why, that's me, silly child. Countess Lavinia Waldorf Carlton. Hmm, okay. I believe we're going to find out plenty uh, of her past in the next couple of um, interactions with this game. So we're going to have to... Uh, oh yeah, hey look at this, it's the gift shop. It's the doorway to the gift shop. Shop. Ah, come on. It's just... yeah. There's an interesting little thing in the gift shop, I seem to remember, and I'm quite proud for having been able to find it legitimately way back when. Remember, this game played, uh, came out <clears throat> ages and ages and ages and ages ago. So let me, let me, let, let's begin with this. It looks just like the Dagger of Amon-Ra. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, we have some, uh, we have some replicas. And, uh, let's have a closer look, shall we? You see, it says made in Pittsburgh. The dagger shows Pittsburgh's high degree of craftsmanship. Isn't that nice? The dagger shows Pit- Yes. However, if we go over here, and I think it's there, <gasps> something is missing. The dagger shows a high degree of craftsmanship. It can reasonably be um, surmised that this is the genuine one, hiding in plain view. This is an important event, because we can see now that the time has passed a little bit. Fräulein, this gift shop is closed. You should not be here. Oh, I'm sorry. The door was unlocked. Unlocked? My assistant will be disciplined harshly for this mistake. He has a, an Please assistant. Please join the party now. I will be forced to injure you. You're a good man. At least he's clear. I, I, I appreciate it when somebody is definitely very, very, very clear like that. You know? <laughs> Please leave the gift shop or I'll be very angry. What the fuck good is that? Oh, look at this. Another event. Do you recognize this sprite? Miss Bo? Oh, no. That's, that's oh. a dead, <laughs> dead giveaway. Mr. Dorian? Steve? That's right. We met at the docks. Oh, dear. Your shoes. They aren't exactly formal. That's the first thing you look at? Oh, well, I can explain that. But not right now. I see. Well, mm, what brings you here? You. Mm. Oh, me? You told me you'd be here tonight, and, well, I thought we should talk. Oh, about what? Um, could we step outside for a minute? The moonlight is very nice tonight. My, my. Well... All right. I think I'd enjoy that. Look at the way he walks. <laughs> I don't think we really needed to see them leaving the museum. I mean, we're see it's right outside here. Anyway, I'm just nitpicking. Go on. <laughs> I just Jeez. wanted to explain to you who I really am. Look at that. You're not Steve Dorian? Uh, well, yes, I am Steve Dorian, but I felt like I didn't give you the most accurate impression of myself when I met you earlier today. But, 
gee willikers, I'm just not used to meeting attractive young ladies on the docks. Oh, Steve. I wasn't down there looking for a man. I'm a professional journalist working on a story. Oh, well, yes, of course you are. I didn't mean to imply anything. In fact, I was very impressed with your professionalism and with your smile. Oh. I just didn't want you to think I'm a common stevedore. You aren't? Well, I'll admit I was wondering what a stevedore was doing at this ritzy museum fundraiser. My stevedore job pays the bills, but I'm aiming for a career as an artist. However, I'm really here because I'd hate myself for the rest of my life if I didn't try to see you again. Maybe I'm a fool, maybe you think we're too different, but I had to try. You're a good man. Well, I'm very flattered. Are you always this nervous? I would be. I'm not very good with women. I, I spent all my time working ever since I was ten years old, when my father died. I've never had a chance to date very much. Lately, I've spent my free time going to school. I'm starting to think we're more alike than I first thought. My mother died when I was very young, so I was raised by my father. What kind of an artist are you? I'm a painter, and I do a little sculpting. Painting and sculpting. How hmm. interesting. But I think that an artist would know enough not to wear work boots with his tuxedo at a formal party. You're not going to let that go, are oh, you? I said I'd explain <laughs> that, didn't I? I was hoping nobody would notice. I had to blow two weeks' pay to rent this tux, but I didn't have enough left over to rent the fancy shoes. It's hmm. just that I had to see you again. My, my. You spent all your money just to see me? My goodness, I don't know what to say. Say you'll have dinner with me some evening. I, I may seem a little odd, but I promise that I'm harmless. I'd be honored to spend an evening with you and show you the sights around town. Well, I don't usually, but you've gone to a lot of trouble to find me. I think I can trust you. Really? You'll do it? Oh, thank you. You won't regret it. I'll make it a, a memorable evening. I'll paint for you. I'll dance for you. I'll, I'll sing for you. Anything you want. <laughs> well, there's no need to get carried away. Let's see how dinner goes first. Yeah, let's be reasonable. Of course. You're absolutely right. I, I don't seem too anxious, do I? Uh... Maybe just a bit, but that's okay. Okay. I'll take a deep breath and calm down. I'll be fine. I'll do whatever you want. I think this is the beginning of something important, Steve. I like you already. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Steve, you Let's man. Let's go back to the party, Steve. <laughs> I've got work to do. Jeez. So Laura Bo gets off a train like this afternoon, okay? She starts a job <laughs> and she finds a man that day. Good God. How unrealistic this game is. Or maybe it is realistic. Not like I know what real life is like. Jeez, I spent all my time outside of real life. He does have a weird walk cycle. But I suppose that is, you know, kind of a given with his work boots. Now, that being done, I believe we, uh, I believe this is a good time for ending this episode. So hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching this far. In the next episode, we're going to continue this, uh, high society, uh, stuff. And we might discover that this, uh, this socializing is more like high society's version of a cage match. Anyhow, see you soon.